This lecture examines intelligence lessons from the Cuban Missile Crisis. I often joke with my undergraduates that I realize the Cold War may seem as old as the Peloponnesian War to them. So why do we still care? Well, one reason is that the same key intelligence challenges from 1962 are still at work today. The Cuban Missile Crisis narrative goes something like this. On October 14, 1962, U.S. intelligence officials caught the Soviets red-handed. That day, a U-2 spy plane flew over the western end of Cuba and snapped photographs revealing secret Soviet nuclear missile sites under construction there. Analysts judged that the Soviets were weeks and maybe even days from completing the launch sites and that when the missiles were fully operational, they could hit 98% of the continental United States. After 13 days of secret deliberations, President Kennedy announced that he would impose a naval blockade of Cuba and demanded that the missiles be removed. Adlai Stevenson, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, displayed the smoking gun evidence, those U-2 photographs, on large easels inside the U.N. for the world to see. On that day, intelligence quite literally took center stage. As U.S. and Soviet ships faced off on the high seas, Americans were frantically stocking up on food, evacuating cities, moving into bomb shelters, and fearing the worst. President Kennedy at the time estimated the chances of nuclear war between the superpowers at between one and three and even. And then, as they say, the Soviets blinked. Khrushchev agreed to remove the missiles and the world stepped back from the brink. It turns out the U.S. blinked too, agreeing to remove Jupiter missiles in Turkey as part of the deal. But that compromise was kept secret for nearly two decades, and that's a story for another day. The point here is that particularly in recent years, with the intelligence failures of 9-11 and the Iraq War, a kind of Cuban Missile Crisis nostalgia has set in. Back then, it seems, intelligence worked better. The Cuban Missile Crisis is widely seen as a stunning intelligence success. But was it? Beneath this famous crisis, there is also a stunning and not so famous intelligence failure. On September 19, 1962, just three weeks before those famous U-2 spy plane photographs revealed the Soviet missile deployment, the CIA produced a special national intelligence estimate to the president and his closest advisors that concluded the Soviets would not place nuclear missiles in Cuba. It was the fourth Cuban intelligence estimate of that year and the fourth to reassure Kennedy and his advisors that Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev would not dream of deploying offensive weapons so close to the United States. This slide shows the money quote from Sherman Kent, who led the CIA Estimates Office at the time of the crisis, and who wrote a post-mortem about it two years later, in 1964. Kent wrote, there is no blinking the fact that we came down on the wrong side. The CIA's brightest analysts made the wrong call, and the result was nearly nuclear war. And the question is why? That's what we're going to examine. In part one, I overview what intelligence assessments are, how they're made, and what they said back in 1962. In part two, I explain why the Cuba estimates were wrong, looking at five key factors that still challenge U.S. intelligence officials today.